today we'll be looking at our Matrix Incident and Crisis Management solution. This is a modular solution that supports search and rescue operators throughout their activities. The solution is divided into these different modular areas. So we have resource management, the C chart, incident management, and the information gathering area. All of these have their own purpose, but are all interconnected. Looking at the incident management area, it's divided into these different sections. So to start with, we have this initial action area. Today we'll be looking at the case of a missing swimmer. The first thing that happened was a distress radio call came in to the operator. So the first thing that they can do is they can enter the text directly into this area. Then they can click on the button to create a new incident. The basic information will be populated into the incident summary on the right side. The logging area is in the middle and on the left you can see this mini map also starts to give an overview of the situation. In this area we have the smart logging input area which means that even by typing in the hashtag type swimmer overdue missing the most relevant fields will then be displayed. By typing in the hashtag from vessel C Fortuna, which is where the initial distress message came in from, both the information gathering area over here will then be populated with the vessel information, as well as all of the other fields in the incident management area will also reflect these changes. The next thing that we can do is we can mobilize our resources. So for this incident, we have a priority resource, a vessel called MAR3 and we can click on that and it's already then requested and it's displayed in our instant management module as well as in our resource overview in the requested column over here. The operator can assign additional resources in the same area and those will also be displayed in our resource overview here. The next thing to do is to assign an airborne resource. So in this case, we have a drone available However, it's a multi-step process to assign a drone. So the first thing that we do is we click on it to request it. And in the background, the system will generate a notification to a tablet device that a um, aircraft coordinator has the ability to receive the notification and then confirm the drone approval. So we can have a look at that now. The tablet is here and we can see that the notification has come in which we can open already. We see the incident list. And if we click on this particular incident, we'll see all of the main incident information, including the category, the vessel that's involved and the position information. We can have a look at this on the chart as well. So if we move over to our chart area, we can see all of the vessels in the local area. We can add or remove layers if required. So for instance, to check the local weather. And once we've done all of that, what we can do is we can go back to our incident, have a look, and we can actually approve the drone deployment just by checking this. Back in the incident, the drone is now moved to the assign column. So that's been done in the background um, based on that um, approval process. Looking at our C chart, we have um, this integrated C chart that has the AIS information as well as other incident information. And just by clicking on this uh, radio communication area, we can see the channels available for quick communication. If we look at the nearby vessels, just by clicking on one, we can open a context menu, have a look at the basic information, and if required, because this vessel is quite close to the incident location, we can assign it directly to the incident, which will be reflected in our incident management area, as well as over here in our resource overview. You can see it's displayed already at the on-scene area. Looking half an hour into the incident, we can see that there's been additional resources involved in the incident, which are displayed here in our resource overview. The C chart still contains all of the nearby vessels. Looking over to the incident management module, the procedures that have been completed are shown here in green. The logging has been filled in here in the middle 
and the summary is almost complete. If we look up to this area at the top, we see our milestone timeline. This contains all of the most important actions and decisions that were made throughout the incident. And we can actually look at these most important actions also in the tablet. And this is displayed in our intelligent activity stream. And all of the updates are automatically pushed. This gives anyone outside of the control room access to live incident updates. Now we're in the final phase of the incident. The resources can be ordered to stand down and return. All of the procedures here have been done, so they're marked in green, and the incident summary is fully populated. All that's left to do is close and archive the incident. Once we've done that, we can move on to handling our other incidents, which are displayed above in this tab area. The overall solution is modular, it provides an innovative approach to incident handling and supports the operators through the full life cycle of incident and crisis management. If you'd like to know more, please get in touch for more information or a more detailed demonstration.